Hello, hello. Welcome to Verbling. I'm Teacher Oakley. A little late, but we are live. Uh, hopefully, these uh, technical problems, we have technical difficulties. We have been experiencing. Uh, hopefully, everything's all better. Hi, everybody. I'm live. I'm here. Okay, great. The chat box is working. The camera's working. My brain is working. Great. Come on in and join me. And uh, welcome back to Verbling. We are going to look at co-locations today. Co-locations, which are re related to frequency and time. Uh, okay, co-locations, of course, groups of words. Uh, adjectives that commonly go with nouns, verbs that go with prepositions, verbs that go with object nouns, those types of things, um, which are, are commonly used by speakers uh, of native English. Uh, okay. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at related to talking about numbers and how often or how much or up or down, talking about uh, the whole numbers thing and co-located phrases. Uh, English, of course, is a, really a language of phrases and clauses, not so much word by word by word by word. So, uh, hey, if any of you are patient, and have been hanging around waiting for these small technical difficulties to cure themselves <laughs> or be cured, not themselves. Uh, here I am. I'm uh, in class. So come on in and join me. And we'll look at co locations uh, related to frequency. I see no reason not to start. I'm going to do a screen share and uh, oops, hang on. I'm going to do a screen share. Let me try that again and uh, start talking about these collocations, which are related to, <clears throat> pardon me, related to uh, talking about numbers, amounts, quantities, and frequency, how often, how much. Uh, okay, first of all, let me share this with you. There, uh, we frequently use the word number or amount as a noun. Obviously, when we're talking about uh, quantity or, uh, yeah, well, quantity. Uh, okay, uh, there are a lot of different adjectives which can be used with either the word, the noun, number, or the noun amount. Uh, a minute number, a minute amount refers to... Uh, it's very similar to tiny. A uh, very, very small amount is a minute amount, a minute number, a tiny number, a tiny amount. These adjectives co-locate very well, very commonly, sound very natural for English speakers with, with both of these words. Uh, of course, the small on the small end, minute or tiny, uh, significant number or significant amount uh, okay meaning an important number or an amount of something uh, a surprising amount um, okay an, an amount or a surprising number a surprising number of people I like to eat tree bark okay I just made that up but that obviously would be a surprising number uh, okay, a considerable number. Now we're getting into large, uh, talking just big numbers. Uh, considerable amount, considerable number, substantial number, a substantial amount, a little more formal, a little more sophisticated, uh, very useful for you folks who who use English in business reports or academic writing. These are very useful co-locations. 
but realistically for anybody who uses English, an enormous number, an enormous amount. Okay, you're talking about very big numbers, large quantities, large number, large amount also should be really in this little table. They're also extremely common. Okay, again, again. Uh, all right, I, we've been live for a few minutes now. Everything seems to be in working order. So come on in and join me so you can interact in this lesson about collocations related to numbers and frequency. Uh, please do join me. Hopefully, I, I'm not sure about everybody else, but I'm not having any problems with the website at this time. So come on in. Let's uh, let's play. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. I'm just going to continue with my my material, but of course, it'd be a whole lot better if I had some students in here. Don't be shy. Come on in. Join me here in the class. Nobody here but us chickens. No one here but me at this point. Uh, okay, let's talk about some co-locations related to talking about numbers. Uh, odds and evens. Okay. Odd and even numbers. Okay, uh, 51 is an odd number. 50 is an even number. Even numbers are all numbers divisible by 2. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Oakley. Oakley. Yay. Odd numbers uh, refer to the other ones. One, three, five, seven, nine. Like that. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, there is another expression, however. Uh, an odd number. Uh, okay, well, no, actually, it's the same thing. We might talk about uh, there's an odd number of guests for something. For example, you need pairs of people. Oh, there we go. Uh, hello, Anna. How are you? Um, hello, teacher. Good morning. And sorry for the late. I had a problem connections. Yeah, it's not you. There was a problem with the server, actually. Uh, okay. Had a problem. Okay. okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, not a problem. So, yes, any other viewers out there know it's not you, actually. it's uh, There was a problem with the Verblink server. Everything is back in, seems to be, uh, back in working order now. Anyway, uh, welcome to the class. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. And you? I, I'm good, very good, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, we're we're gonna, we're looking at collocations today that are related to talking about numbers and frequency and quantity. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Very common in, in the in the business world, doing reports or reporting on information academically. Uh, many of these this next series to talk about numbers and relationships of numbers. Uh, okay, uh, Anna, a decline or a drop? Uh, go ahead and read the example. Okay, uh, there's been a recent decline in the number of boys joining the army. All right, which do you think is more formal or informal? Decline or drop, in your in opinion? My opi in my opinion, um, decline is more formal. Mm-hmm. And I would concur with your opinion. Yeah, uh, I agree with you. Slightly, not a big deal, um, but uh, I think they can both be used in any kind of academic or business writing. Pretty much the same thing with increase uh, and rise. Same deal, decline, drop. Uh, I would add, add that both of these, uh, well, uh, can be a verb or a noun, to rise, to increase, a n increase or a, a rise. Okay, the number is increasing, you can 
easily say that or the number increased past tense as a verb uh, or okay there has been an increase in the number either way you have options there okay how about this expression Anna come to the total of well there you can to a total of is um, the the total quantity of of anything. Anything, right? Okay. As in the example, if we add up all the figures, it comes to a total of seven ninety five, seven ninety four. Sorry. Very <laughs> common. Very common to hear this in any kind of store or shop. Okay. You've got oranges and bananas and apples and one watermelon and four peaches, and that will come to a total of 14 euros. Good deal. Uh, all right. Birth rate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Something rate. Uh, Anna. Mm, okay. Yes. When, when mm. We re refer to rate. Oh, Yes, over the last few years, uh, the birth uh, rate has been falling. Mm, the the total quantity of of, of birth in this case mm. Mm, rate is mm, I don't know exactly. Mm, <laughs> I I know, <laughs> I know the meaning, but uh, but I don't know explain mm, the word in in English. Yeah. The rate has to do with the relation, the changing, the changing number, uh, faster or slower. Uh, okay. Yes. Right. Uh, rate has to do with uh, hmm, how fast or slow something happens. A rate of speed, very common. Um, but not to be confused, rate can also have to do with numbers in a different way. Um, for example, oh, what rate do you pay for electricity? Okay, I'm talking about, yes. right, yes. how much you pay per kilowatt hour, like that. Yes. Okay, that's also rate can refer to money or particularly money you pay. Oh, oh for example, the, the increase in... Uh, a rate uh, taxes, for example. Mm -hmm. Your tax rate. That's right. Well, the tax rate. Yes. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no problem. I uh, yeah, I was going to mention that. I forgot. But yeah, in some countries, you have a different tax rate: five percent, ten percent, fifteen percent, whatever, depending upon <clears throat> your level of income. For example. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, right. Uh, the percentage which your tax is your tax rate. Okay, well, a unit is one. In fact, any U-N-I is a prefix, or actually it's a root, that means one. You see, unicycle, a one-wheeled bicycle is a unicycle. A unit is one, measurement of one. Um, okay, a unit of currency. Of course, yes. in the EU, it's the euro. Yes, in most of in European countries, is the euro. Right. Uh, okay. It looks like uh, Sasha has found us. Great. Hi, Sasha. Oh. oh I had a couple of people find us here. All right. Very good. Hello. Uh, how are you today? I'm uh, fine, thank you. I overslept. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> everybody thinks they're late. You, you guys, you know what? You're not late. There was, <laughs> there, was <laughs> there was a problem with the server. I couldn't even open the class until ten minutes ago. Uh, uh, I saw a couple of uh, some things uh, on Warbling. Uh, yeah. Now you can't uh, uh, sign more than three classes. Yeah, there's a change in policy, but also something happened with the server apparently. Is the information I got. Anyway, we're here now. Everything's working. Yeah, the whole idea, I guess, was uh, you can only s sign up for three classes in advance. There were many students who would just sign up for every single class, 24 yes, hours a day. 
<laughs> recent, recently, uh, all yeah. the classes are almost booked. Are, are booked. Right, exactly. So they wanted to curtail that. Uh, okay. Let me uh, also welcome Ivan. Hello, Ivan. Hello, Oakley. Hi. Uh, thanks for joining us. Glad you found us. Okay. We're back in, on, in business. Okay, we're looking at co-locations and words that we talk uh, that we use to talk about frequency next. Uh, okay, Sasha, can you read this sentence? Widespread. Okay. <clears throat> Widespread, exciting or happening in many places or among people, collocate strongly with a lot of words relating to either attitude. Widespread interest, widespread support, or problems, widespread damage, widespread poverty. Okay. Basically, exactly what you would think. Spread widely. Uh, okay. But used as a, an adjective, widespread. Um, and by the way, e existing or happening in many places or for many people. Can you think of another one? Widespread interest, widespread support. Uh, Another one that talks about attitude, Sasha? Maybe another co-location? People's attitude or emotion or feeling towards something? Feeling, even. Uh, do you mean a uh, synonym? No, no. Well, no. I, another example of a co-location. There's a couple here. Widespread interest, widespread support. Just wondering if you knew, could think of another one with widespread to show attitude, even emotion, is an attitude. Mm, I don't know. Okay. Uh, widespread anger, widespread unrest, well, I guess that's more problems. Widespread panic, it's very common as a co-location. And a popular band name in the 90s. <laughs> Okay, anyway. Uh, all right. There's been widespread support. Okay, well, for the government's new policy, widespread panic in the, in the recent hurricane, like that. Heavy winds have caused widespread damage. Okay, there you go. Uh, Ivan, can you read this whole, this, this whole section here about rare? Okay. Rare, infrequent, and special. Uh, collocates with things in the natural world. A rare disease, a rare bird, a rare space species, and also with uh, collectible items of special interest. A rare stamps. Rare stamps, rare coins. Okay. Uh, definitely. Uh, okay. Hmm. Um, uh, there is kind of an idiomatic meaning for rare bird, which they're used as an example. Okay, it could be very concrete. The Mexican toucan is a very rare bird, and you almost never see it. Fine. Um, there's another meaning, though. If I say, uh, Ivan, if I say uh, Sasha is a rare bird, what does that mean if I say it about a person? Do you have any idea? It's not so far from the real meaning. I don't have ideas. No idea? Okay. If you I'm say sorry. that somebody is a rare bird, you're saying that they're very unique, very special. Oh, um, okay. It, it can be negative, but more often than not, usually it's actually a positive thing. Oh, he's a rare bird, a student that actually studies and does his homework. Like that. Okay. Uh, all right. Anyway, I think that's pretty rare, co-locates with those things. I think that's pretty understandable. Uh, okay, let me welcome Frank to the class. Hello, Frank. Hello, man. Hello, man. How are you? I'm pretty good. Thank okay. you for asking me. Okay. 
Frank, can you do me a favor and read this next short paragraph here, highlighted in blue? If someone re repeatedly does something that annoys you, annoys you, uh, you can use the expression "keeps acting, keeps interrupting, keep hitting, etc." Mm -hmm. Keep going. <laughs> this is common in informal spoken English. Please don't keep interrupting with me when I am trying to work. The children keep asking me when you when we are going to buy a new computer. Okay. Now, okay, this is the good job. Great, and yes, we, we use these expressions to talk about when somebody annoys us. True. But it is also possible to use these words co-located together in a positive way. I want you guys to keep asking me questions. Okay. Great. And I, just, I just said use the same example, but I'm using it in a positive way. It's good for the class if you can guys keep asking me questions. It helps me teach you. That's positive. So just because our information here says it's about negative things, not necessarily true. It, it could be you could use the same thing. Um, I just told you to keep going. For example, it doesn't have to be negative, so don't don't let that mislead you. Uh, okay, uh, Anna, can you read this next part? <clears throat> yes. Uh, constant and continual and continual also convey the idea of something happening repeatedly. Um, I couldn't get on with my work uh, today because of constant interruptions. The phone kept um, ringing every five minutes. Uh, it was a mistake. Uh, I am sorry, teacher. Um, um, mm. I I can see it the the left the left um, in the left. Uh, uh, it was it was uh, yes. Uh, thank you. It was a mistake uh, to go on holiday with them. Uh, they continue uh, complaining, drove us mad. Okay. Uh, all right. There you go. All right. Frequency over and over and over again. We use constant or continuous. Uh, um, continual. Uh, actually, you will hear people say continuous as well. Um, really? Okay. It should be continual. Uh, continuous means unbroken. Okay, but nevertheless, you'll hear, hear, hear people use it slightly incorrectly. Continuous, continuous banging kept me awake all night. Um, Sasha, what do you mean? Get on with. I'm confused. What does it mean in the uh, the text? Uh, oh, 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 oh! I see. Um, I couldn't I get on that. with. Okay, continue. Oh, That's continue. it. Uh, yes, uh, it's a phrasal is it verb. Is it common? Well, it's, it's so common that I didn't even notice it to point it out to you guys. Oh. <laughs> That's usually a pretty good sign. Um, yeah, yes, it's very common. Uh, all right, let's get on with it. Uh, all right, let's continue. Yeah, I'd say it's extremely common. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Okay. Describing graphs and charts. Uh, okay, these are, are very commonly used, of course, giving business presentations, obviously reporting on data. Uh, all right, I don't think there's any need to, to beat these up. I would point out that anybody who's interested in taking the IELTS academic test for the writing task one, you should memorize all these. <laughs> frequently, you're going to need those because uh, frequently you're reporting on a graph or a chart. Not always, but frequently. Or other related things where you're, you're comparing 
uh, comparing basically numbers or quantities of things. Uh, okay, so these you totally very well together. Rose sharply or rose steeply or fell. Uh, a dramatic rise, a dramatic fall. Increase steadily, increase gradually. Could be increased sh sharply, actually. It's fine as well. Uh, <laughs> Hello, Frank? Are, are you talking to us? <laughs> Oops. Okay. Um, hope he wasn't giving secret information there. All right. When um, when things don't increase or decrease, we say they remain constant. They remain stable. Another one is they stay flat. Stay or stayed flat. Uh, okay. Talk about no change. Stable, constant, flat, or unchanged. Actually. Sales of baby rattles has remained unchanged. Oh, remained. Okay. Another possible co-location there. Mm, okay. Let's, um, let's try some of these out. Well, maybe we'll come, come back. Well, okay. We missed some of this. All right. Well, let's see if you can. If, go ahead and re try this first one. Read the sentence and uh, try to substitute the underlined phrase word with another word okay to see if you can think of uh, another co-location with the following word uh, okay um, all right Sasha starting with you number one okay, um. I only uh, shall I uh, yeah go ahead and read the whole sentence but instead of a very small amount see if you can think of another adjective which co-locates with amount uh, I think I <laughs> missed it yeah, okay. I only put a, <laughs> a very small amount of chili in the soup but it was still too hot for some people uh, I think it was at, at the beginning of the class. I, I uh, think you're right. Do, do you know? What would uh, you guess? Yeah, I only... Do you have a guess based on your own knowledge? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I'm thinking. Um, no, no. I can't. Okay. Maybe I know, but I uh, can't. Think of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can't. Well, let me throw it out to the class. Anybody have a good word to put in there? Yes, yeah. it's um, to change for other adjectives um, um, similar a very small quantity. Oh. I, supp I suppose um, a tiny, a tiny amount of a chili. A tiny amount, very good. A tiny amount would work very well. A tiny amount uh, or a minute amount. Also, uh, another one that's more rare, but a favorite, of mine, but it still collocates is minuscule. It means very, yes. very small. Minuscule yes. amount of chili in there. I don't know why everyone's complaining. Don't you like spicy food? Okay. Anyway, moving <laughs> on. Uh, Ivan, number two. Very good. Thank you, Anna. Uh, number two, Ivan. Okay. Uh, there was an extremely large amount of information to read, 5,000 pages, which was far too much for one person to absorb. Okay. Uh, what do you think? Extremely large I, amount. I think uh, maybe a huge amount. I think that works. Or, Certainly. Or okay. a, lot of, a lot of amount. No, you would not say a huge amount. Yeah, that's great. Uh, a lot of amount. No, no, that is awkward. Um, that really does not co-locate well. It sounds a little okay. awkward in English. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
well, all right. Well, good point. A lot of pencils, a lot of cats, a lot of countable things, um, plural, is very normal. But one word, like a lot of number, a lot of amount, that doesn't make sense. Amount is kind of un uncountable. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. We, we tend to use a lot for countable things. Mm, well, amount, technically speaking, it can be countable. Uh, there are two amounts of the solution which can be used to create an adhesive mixture. All right, fine. Okay, it's possible. There are two numbers that divide into 14, the number 2 and the number 7. Yeah, all right, fine. They can be countable. But in this case, not so much. Okay, there was a huge amount of information. There was a substantial amount of information. There was an incredible amount of information. Uh, well, okay, that might fit another one later. An enormous, there you go, an enormous amount of information. Uh, some other ones for you. Uh, Frank, uh, how about number three? We can't ignore the fact that a small but important number of people disagree with the plan. Aha. Uh -huh. Hmm. Do you have any idea? A small but important. Yeah. Okay. It's I'll, very important. I'll help you cheat here. All right. These numbers over here co-locate with number and amount. Okay. Do you know which one means a small but very important amount? Frank? Did I lose you? Significant. 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 Very good. Yes, that's it exactly. Uh, a significant amount. It's maybe it's not huge, but it is important. Significant means important. So okay, so, uh, significant amount, significant number. Mm -hmm. uh, very good. Uh, okay, uh, Anna, back to you. Number four. Yes, and there was an unexpected number of people at the meeting who had uh, never voted in their lives. Um, uh, surprising. Surprising number of people. Very good. Uh, pretty much the same thing. An incredible number of people. Usually we use an incredible number of people or an incredible amount to mean it's like surprising, but it's also additionally large. Uh, yes. Well, unexpected, I guess, would also sort of imply large. Yeah, okay. Okay. Pretty much the same thing. Uh, okay. Sasha, uh, okay, let's see what you remember. The last one here, number five. The government's new budget will mean that a rather large number of people will have pay more in taxes. Give two answers. Uh, yeah. so. Well, go for one. Or what is a, a rather large, like more? Well, more exaggeratedly more. large. Well, here you go. I'll, I'll help you out too. Okay. Uh, enormous. Okay. Enormous. That's rather large. All right. Uh, and what is the difference between significant and substantial? Significant and substantial. Yes. Uh, in my dictionary, it's uh, synonyms. Yeah, they're very, very, they could be synonyms. They pretty much are synonyms. Very, very slight uh, difference in meaning. But significant uh, it also means important. My significant other. Have you ever heard that phrase? Speaking of co-locations. Sasha, I'd like you to meet my significant other. Who am I introducing you to?
Sasha, are you there? Am I here? Hello? Oh, Sasha's not here. Okay. Uh, Ivan, let me ask you the same question. <laughs> if I'm introducing you to my significant other, who am I introducing you to? Uh, Do you think? Maybe uh, you, your close friend or your relative? No. No? Uh, <laughs> definitely my wife. Or if I'm not uh, married, my fiance. Yes, or, sure. Yeah. Uh, right. Significant means important, like most important. So there is a slight difference. Significant is substantial. Substantial means uh, notice importantly large, but significant means important in maybe some other way. So yes, I would agree that there are synonyms, but there's a slight difference in meaning. There could be a, a okay. nuance. All right. Uh, really a nuance. Uh, okay, let's look at uh, something else here. We, just got a few minutes. A little uh, choose the correct co-location. Co Ivan, number one. Uh, Seventeen, twenty-nine, and three hundred and ninety-five are all strange. Ah, okay. Uh, Which? I, I have to choose Pick one. Yeah, that's it. Pick one and only one. Uh, are all uh, unequal numbers? Well, no. Two, four, six, no. eight are equal numbers. Two, four, six, eight equal numbers. One, three, five, seven, nine are odd numbers. Uh, Odds and equal. Okay. Uh, Frank, number two. Many European countries use the euro as their standard unit of currency. Currency, right. Uh, the name of the money is the currency, the dollar, the peso. Uh, okay, well, the next one's easy. I already said it. 26, 8, 192 are all even numbers. Anna, number four. Um, yes, uh, number four. The bill counts gets to a total of uh, 2000 uh, 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 $287 okay the, the bill comes to comes to not to. no gets just comes no, to i i said gets <laughs> i think so okay. I, don't, we, I don't realize sorry <laughs> we, we won't tell anyone <laughs> I'll, I'll edit that out of the video. Okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> Come to. All right. Comes to two hundred eighty-seven dollars. Yes, all right. That's okay. it. Thank you. Very common expression for anybody who's tallying up, tally to tally to add tally, or tallying up or adding up your bill. It's very common to say, and that will come to maybe even a grand total. Of two hundred and eighty-seven dollars only. Okay, Sasha, last one. The unemployment rate is falling. Uh, okay. Yes. Why not decrease? The unemployment rate is decreasing. Yes, I guess. I guess so, as well. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm questioning the book, not you. Know. Mm, sorry, teacher. I Yes, Anna? Um, I have a question. Go. Um, uh, in the number four, uh, um, we would say um, uh, the bill arrives at a total? A total? Uh, no. 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 I understand what you're saying. I, actually, that's a good question. I didn't even think of that. Sometimes you may hear someone refer to themselves in the third person 
And so we arrive at the total of $287. They're talking about themselves in the third person. I've heard that. Yes. Okay. All right. I, I've, I have heard that used before. It's a weird construction because it's always weird to, for somebody to talk about themselves in the third person. Like this. Anna, Oakley must now close the class. So Oakley will tell the class goodbye, and Oakley will start a new class in just another minute. So Oakley would like to thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, teacher. Thank you. Thank you for the class. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. Some people do talk like that. It's scary. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay.